Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Uh, welcome everyone, uh, continuing with our most valuable cards of an era countdown list. We're now into the uh, late 1990s, 1995 through 1999. Uh, so we'll count down the five highest sets of each year, uh, using the highest single sale from each set to, to rank them. Uh, only counting sales within the past two years, and uh, sales in gem mint grade don't count, as uh, uh, gem mint grade sales can severely, uh, severely distort things. So uh, we'll only be looking at sales in, in grades of, of nine or lower. Uh, any of the grading companies are, are fine. Um, and we'll also include raw card sales uh, as well. Uh, but okay, enough with the, the small print. Let's get to the cards themselves. You'll, you'll notice that these lists are completely dominated by two names as there, there weren't a, a lot of rookie card or key rookie cards in this stretch of years. Starting off with 1995, which is dominated by parallels. Number five, 1995 Upper Deck Electric Diamond Gold. One of the uh, simplest parallel sets ever with just the uh, gold diamond logo in the upper corner. Uh, silver parallels came one per retail pack while the gold parallels were one per retail box which was sort of a standard hit rate in the uh, mid-90s. The highest sale from this set was a Derek Jeter, which uh, is his third year card, and went for $199 in a BGS9. Number four, 1995 Select Certified Mirror Gold. A, a beautiful parallel set. This was a Select's attempt to mimic the very popular refractor sets in, in the Topps brands that had uh, been introduced two years ago. Select Certified only lasted two years as a set, but the Mirror Parallels are still in very high demand today, um, especially 1996, which we'll get to in a bit. The highest sale of a card from uh, the 1995 set was, again, Derek Jeter, uh, which sold for $300 in a PSA 9. Number three, 1995 Upper Deck Special Edition Gold, one of the first parallel inserts uh, sets ever. The special edition inserts were one per hobby pack, while the gold parallels of the special edition inserts were one per hobby box. Again, that's a lot of boxes you would uh, have to open to get your guy. Uh, the most expensive uh, card from this set was, you guessed it, Derek Jeter. Uh, a PSA 9 recently fetched $399. Number 2, 1995 Bowman's Best Refractors. Uh, Bowman's best second year of refractors, which by 1995 had become the hobby's favorite parallel set. Uh, this set features some decent rookies. Uh, you can see three here in the picture, uh, in Andrew Jones, Scott Rowland, and Vladimir Guerrero. Uh, the Guerrero is by far the most valuable, uh, and uh, a BGS9 recently fetched $728. And number one, 1995 Finest Refractor. Uh, the first year where Finest has the protective film cover on uh, every card, adding to its you know premium reputation. Uh, this is the third year for Finest Refractors, and they are still relevant today, some 25 years later. The Derek Cheater is once again the top card, with a PSA 9 selling for $799. All right, on to 1996, where things start to ramp up a bit in terms of value. Um, and spoiler, if you were hoping to see someone other than Derek Jeter, you'll have to wait until 1997. Number 5, 1996 Studio Press Proof Silver. Another parallel without much to it. These uh, look like the regular set with just the, the lettering a, a little more silvery. There's actually three parallels of this set. The, the bronze, which has a print run of 2,000. The gold, which has a print run of 500. And the silver here, which has a print run of 100. Not sure why they chose to make the silver rarer than the gold, but uh, regardless, the Derek Jeter in a PSA 9 sold for $487. Number 4, 1996 Finest Refractors. Finest tried something new with their base set in 1996. Uh, they had bronze, silver, and gold cards as, as part of their base set, also known as uh, common, uncommon, and rare. The gold refractors generally sell for more than the others, uh, but the highest sale from this set was a Derek Jeter Silver, uh, which went for $500 in a PSA 9. Number 3, 1996 Topps Chrome Refractors. Uh, first, Finest started the trend in 1993, then uh, Bowman's Best came along in 1994. 
And now the first Topps Chrome set, which of course features refractors. No surprise that the Jeter is the most valuable card in this set, as by today's rookie card rule, this would be considered his rookie card. Uh, lots of sales in the thousands of dollars, with the highest being an SGC 8.5, uh, which sold for 2500 Number two, 1996 Leaf Signature Autographs. Uh, a historical set, which is the first major league set to uh, feature an autograph in every pack. Uh, autographs had three parallels, a bronze, silver, and gold, which were the same except for the uh, little oval leaf logo in the middle, which was bronze, silver, or gold. Uh, features many players' first ever major league certified uh, autograph card. Uh, including Mariano Rivera and, of course, Derek Jeter. Uh, a PSA 9 silver copy of Jeter's sold on eBay in December for $7,500. And number one, 1996 Select Certified Mirror Parallels. Three different parallels here, red, blue, and, and gold. I'm including them all, but the, uh, the golds are the most valuable. These are very attractive cards, refractor-like fronts, and, and this time with very low print runs. The red parallels were limited to 90, the blues to 60, and, and the mirror golds had a stated print run of just 30 sets. Jeter takes the cake here, and check out uh, this sale. In December, a PSA 8 went for $50,000. Uh, shortly before that, a PSA 10, which didn't make the list because of my uh, silly rules, sold for $202,000. That was on eBay in October. On to 1997, which sees a couple of important uh, firsts. It's got the first one-of-one one set uh, and the first ever jersey card. And uh, someone else surpasses Jeter as the hobby's favorite player this year as we are now out of uh, Jeter's rookie years and pre-rookie years. Number five, 1997 Ultra Platinum Medallion. More parallel sets here in 1997, starting with these, which came with a uh, stated print run of 200. This set features a, a key rookie card of the era, one of the few players who doesn't see his rookie card in a Bowman set. Um, I'm talking about David Ortiz, who at the time went by uh, David Arias. An ungraded copy of his Platinum Ultra Rookie sold last month for $1,913. Number four, 1997 Pinnacle Totally Certified Platinum Gold. Select Certified uh, changed uh, to Pinnacle Certified in 1997, and, and they added a second set, Pinnacle Totally Certified. Uh, every card in the set was serial numbered, and uh, they had blue parallels out of 1999, uh, and these gold parallels serial numbered to, to just 30. Uh, a BGS9 copy of the Derek Jeter sold for $2,284. Uh, that seemed quite low to me. Perhaps it would have gone for higher if it still had the uh, protective film. Number three, 1997 Flare Showcase Legacy. Uh, a wild set, 1997 Flare. It had a bunch of confusing things going on. Each player had three cards in the set, and, and the Legacy parallels were numbered out of 100, so uh, each player really has uh, 300 Legacy cards. Jeter does not capture the top spot here as a uh, Ken Griffey Jr. BGS 9 sold in May for $3,383. Number two, 1997 Upper Deck Game Jersey. The first ever jersey card in the hobby comes from this set. Uh, the set features only three players, Ken Griffey Jr., Tony Gwen, and Ray Ordonez. Uh, the Ordonez today sells for about 20 bucks. The Gwen sells for around $100. Uh, and a PSA 9 copy of the Griffey recently fetched $3,961. And number one, 1997 EX2000 Essential Credentials. There was a Credentials parallel set numbered out of 299, but the Essential Credentials were out of 99. The rare parallel of an already premium looking set with uh, see-through cardstock. Tough to find these today, especially the top players. Griffey again achieves the highest sale uh, with a PSA 9 going for $4,350 last month. Quick asterisks with uh, 1997. Uh, there were no recent high sales that I could find of any Flare masterpieces. 
Uh, these are the first ever one of one cards, and if uh, a Jeter or Griffey or any big name Ripken, McGuire, or Bonds had sold, uh, it would have certainly been on the list. No, no idea where, but you know, perhaps number one. Now, 1998, uh, Jeter was a little upset that Griffey overtook him last year, so uh, we see the two of them uh, battle it out this year. Number five, 1998 Leaf Rookies and Stars Longevity. The Rookies and Stars set had a lot of things going on with the short prints and, and multiple parallels. The Longevity parallels are numbered to just 50. Uh, the highest sale from this set was an ungraded Derek Jeter which went for $2,176 last month. Number four, 1998 Donruss Crusade Purple. The 1990s saw all sorts of experiments in the hobby, as so many manufacturers were competing to one-up each other with the hot new product and the hot new design. Uh, Donruss tried a multi-product insert with Donruss Crusade, which had various parallels. The purple, par uh, purple parallels are numbered to 100, and uh, Griffey says, not so fast, Jeter, I'll uh, take this one. His BGS 8.5 went for $3,050. Number three, 1998 EX 2001 Essential Credentials. Uh, as I said, a lot of experimenting going on in this era, one being the serial numbering system. The Essential Credentials were each numbered to the card number. You can see on the right, Randy Johnson is card number 73 and it's uh, serial numbered to 73. This, uh, these are the Essential Credentials Now set. There's also an Essential Credentials Future set, which is a serial number to the inverse. So number one was serial number to 100, card number two was serial number to 99, all the way down to one. Uh, annoyingly confusing, absolutely. Uh, popular, also absolutely. These are beautiful cards. Uh, and Griffey again takes the top sale with a BGS9 going for $3,922. Number two, 1998 Metal Precious Metal Gems. More craziness as the uh, 1998 Metal set is totally bonkers with backgrounds that include all sorts of random things going on. Uh, the Precious Metal Gems parallels are out of 50. And Jeter fights back here with a PSA 8.5 selling for $4,499 earlier this year. And number one, 1998 Bowman Chrome Golden Anniversary Refractor. The refractors were so popular, but uh, other brands were doing similar things. So Top started making parallels of the refractors, something we still see all over the place in today's brands. The Golden Anniversary Refractors only survived one year as a concept, the only difference being the facsimile autograph along the left was in gold. The cards were numbered to just five, so totally impossible to find. A Derek Jeter BGS9 sold for $9,961. Uh, I actually cheated on this one as this sale is from 2013, but I didn't uh, notice that until I was almost done with the edit, so too late to change it. And finally, 1999, the Millennium's final year, starts to see an uptick in jersey and autograph cards, although the true jersey and autograph booms won't uh, come until a few years later. Number five, 1999 Skybox Molten Metal Fusion Titanium. Another innovative idea. The fusions were an insert set, and the titanium is a parallel of the insert set numbered uh, out of 50. What's cool about these is it uses tiny die cut holes to create a profile image of the player. The cards are a little sturdier than common cardstock, so they can handle the holes. Uh, Jeter is on top of this set, an ungraded copy sold recently for $2,500. Number four, 1999 Upper Deck Piece of History. Cards include a piece of the Bat Relics. What a lineup in this set, loaded with all-time greats, Mantle, Aaron, Mays, and also active stars, Griffey, Bonds, etc. Uh, some of the cards feature autographs. You can see the Ed, Ed, uh, Eddie Matthews with an auto on the left. But the highest sale from the set is not an autograph, but uh, a Babe Ruth bat card, which in a PSA 9 sold for $2,825. Number three, 1999 Ultra Masterpiece. Uh, the Ultra Masterpieces are one-of-one one parallels. 
Um, obviously, you don't see these very often anymore as it's a 21-year-old 101 set. Uh, the Jeter sold about two years ago. It's a BGS9 and sold for $3,272. I'm surprised that wasn't higher. Number two, 1999 Metal Universe Precious Metal Gems. Metal continues with this popular parallel set, again numbered to 50, um, and this time with more of a, a gold refractor-like front. A lot of brands mimicking the refractor concepts in the uh, 1990s. Jeter is once again on top here as an ungraded copy sold for $3,658. And number one, 1999 Upper Deck Game Worn Jersey. Uh, at first glance, it appears to be a pretty simple jersey relic card set, not serial numbered or anything, but, you know, and to be fair, that's actually what it is, except that it also includes a rare Ken Griffey Jr. autographed jersey card. The card is serial numbered to 24, uh, and the sale of a BGS9 went for $5,115 two months ago. Another quick asterisk, uh, one set that belonged on here but didn't make the cut because of the rules is 1999 Fleer Brilliance 24 karat gold. These were numbered out of just 24 and in 2019 a Griffey PSA 10 uh, sold for $22,000. So certainly had there been a PSA 9 sale it would have made the top five. So that's it, uh, the five most valuable sets from each year of the late 1990s with some uh, asterisks to go along with it. List includes not a lot of variety in players. Uh, 16 Derek Jeters, 6 Ken Griffey Juniors, and one each of David Ortiz, Vladimir Guerrero, and Babe Ruth. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. I'm actually uh, going to take a little break from doing these era countdown videos and, and focus on some other areas of the hobby. Uh, I've actually done a countdown video like this for every year from 1948 up till 1999 now. So at some point in the not too distant future, we'll we'll go back in, uh, into pre-war stuff and, and maybe even further down the road uh, go forward into the 2000s. Uh, but like I said, for now, I'm going to uh, focus on some other aspects of the hobby. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. You know, these are really, really fun for me to make. So I hope they're uh, just as much fun for you guys to uh, watch. Thanks, guys.